Okay, so it's 10.30. Um, welcome everyone to this information seminar about the Knut and Alice Wallenberg and Silife Lab proof of concept grant in life science. My name is Isolde Palombo, and I am a project coordinator at the Scilife Lab Operations Office, and I will be moderating the seminar. Before we start, uh, I want to inform you that this seminar will be recorded, uh, and we will be share sharing this later uh, in our channels. Uh, today's seminar will start with an introduction about the grant. Then we will go more into detail about the application process. And in the end, there will be time for questions and an open discussion. So please post your questions in the uh, chat. By that, uh, I will give the word to SciLife Lab Director and Director of the Data Driven Life Science Program, Professor Oli Kaljoniemi. Please, Oli. Okay, thanks so much, Isolde, and, and uh, uh, good to see you all. Uh, very much welcome to this uh, information event. We're very happy to host this and very happy to run this program together with the Knud and Alice Wallenberg Foundation. And obviously this is a, a joint uh, aspect as reflected by the two sides uh, presenting the uh, uh, program today. So uh, just for uh, introductory purposes, as many of you know, I mean, SciLife Lab is involved in a lot of different things. Uh, we run the technology infrastructure, the national infrastructure, which many of you are users of. Uh, we have a research community, and, and now the recent addition was the Data Driven Life Science Program. So uh, quite a bit as the government is expecting to happen in, in uh, life science and everywhere in science, focusing on excellence internationalization, and then the innovation part is very much uh, now the focus today. Uh, and uh, this program is, is all about uh, building on these other capabilities to promote innovation. We already have a lot of innovation activities at SciLife Lab, for instance, the drug discovery and development platform is, is mostly an innovation platform and helping scientists to move. Uh, academic innovations towards the drug discovery space. So we are otherwise involved in these efforts already. Uh, how this got started was last year. So this is now the second time that we run this program. This is a, a, a news release from last year. And essentially it is uh, exactly in the same format, exactly with the same mindset that we are running this today. And this really aims to ignite the life science innovation. And uh, maybe the, the statement from Jöran Sandberg uh, on the lower right is, is particularly uh, important to keep in mind here that this is really core driven idea to, to, uh, for, for core funding, which is substantial, truly outstanding and significant towards basic research as to how we could best make use of that and help uh, that to create innovations and activities on the on the industrial side. And therefore, the, the whole concept of this proof of concept grant also is linked to the COAVE uh, as, a, as a foundation and as a funder. Uh, then another very, very basic thing as to what is a proof of concept and, and uh, I, I remember last year learning about this, that NASA actually has started this core, uh, this, this uh, concept in the 1970s, and it was in relation to the famous technolo technology readiness levels. Uh, and, and then it has later spread to other uh, areas and disciplines, such as biomedical sciences, which obviously is what we are talking about today. And essentially, this is about bridging the gap from a from an academic innovation to the to the industrial innovation space, where typically it requires additional financing, be it from an existing company or be it in the form of a of a spin-off company or any other form of uh, commercial utilization of the innovation. And obviously, this is not a straightforward street, and we have different mindsets and different. Uh, uh, traditions on on uh, either side. Uh, I would 
like to uh, so 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 this is what we are trying to bridge. So from our angle, this is obviously not forming a complete bridge. Uh, we are not seeking uh, external funding for your innovations. We are facilitating the fact that your innovations could be ready for such uh, external investments. What I would like to link up with this is a typical translational research gap that we often talk about. This is a famous Nature uh, publication which suggested how much we do on the academic side uh, that in the healthcare side does not benefit the patients. And therefore, this is the translational research gap and, and I would just like to say that while we are working also, or where the proof of concept is helping the translational research gap, it is not meant for this bridging. It's more on the bridging towards the industrial uh, utilization. So, so this is like a slide trying to uh, define uh, the, the area where we uh, are actually active. And then on the other side of the bridge, in a way, we are not suggesting that the proof of concept to fund further industrial product development of innovations that have already been transformed uh, or transferred to a company uh, setting. Uh, and, and therefore, it has to be in the right uh, spot, uh, not general translational research and not uh, too late either in terms of uh, something that has already already been been uh, promoted and commercialized. So uh, this uh, uh, program essentially again is uh, based on the fact that first of all Coave is funding it, but we have also worked with Coave that some SciLife Lab scientists, some infrastructure users such as the DDD that are innovation based. Uh, if if that support exists, uh, they are eligible to apply for this proof of concept funding, which then comes on the right side here. And it is eligible to all areas of life science. So we are not just talking about uh, uh, biomedical sciences and healthcare related activities. Those will be a major part of it, obviously, but this is truly open to all fields of science. Uh, and and besides a grant, uh, we are also talking about, as Lillian will describe in, in more detail in a short while, a coaching process uh, called uh, the Wallenberg Launchback uh, Pad process, which helps scientists who are selected into the program to, to then prepare their pitches and to pre prepare them for the actual uh, funding decisions. Uh, so if we take a little bit of a cue from what happened last year, so last year was the first uh, round uh, when this grant was available, uh, and uh, we had 60 applications from multiple different universities coming in. So excellent geographical distribution. Uh, the, there was a little bit of a gender bias that, that we would certainly like to have much more applications from the female scientists. Uh, and uh, what then happened was that these 60 applications were processed by our SciLife Lab nominated uh, review panel. And the review panel selected 18 of these applications to be suggested to the VALP uh, process which uh, uh, then then uh, was the kind of a preparatory phase where, where uh, scientists are, are coached and, and made ready for creating the final pitch uh, to the, to the uh, grant committee. And, and then out of these 18, 10 were finally granted as, as projects. So therefore we will select more, uh, about 20 again this year, uh, applications to go into the VAL process and not everybody who is selected in the first place will get funding at the end. Uh, and if we take some lessons from the 2023 in terms of guiding you 
to make the best possible applications this year. Just a very few points, and we can maybe discuss this later, that uh, many of the applications that we received last year were considered not fundable for one reason, and that was that they were too early. They were not really ready for a proof of concept grant of a one to four million helping the innovation move forward. So the IP and the innovation was not defined well enough uh, and it was not ready for this kind of a proof of concept funding, which is not meant for research per se. It's not meant to create discoveries. The discoveries should already be made. You should be very clear on what the discovery is that you are going to promote as an innovation. And then we also want that the proof of concept grant actually would have a significant impact on promoting the innovation going forward. So in many occasions, it was a little bit unclear what the money would be used for and how would that funding help the innovative aspects and the promotion of the innovation per se, it could have been uh, uh, perfectly fine from the scientific perspective, but but that was not what this grant is, is meant for. In a few occasions, uh, this was also a case where the intellectual property had already been transformed to a company. That is not black and white. We are still in those cases. Also, it is sometimes possible to consider additional IP and, and other things. So, so it is not like a black and white thing that, that you should uh, be totally ineligible. But this is an academic grant. It is given to the university. So therefore, the, the uh, IP should be uh, ready to be promoted forward in a university setting. Uh, some of the grants, there were issues with the IP being somewhat complicated as well. Uh, sometimes it was a little bit old as well. Uh, and, and in a few occasions, it was more like a suggestion of industrial product development because the, innovate, the uh, in, in, innovator uh, had an academic lab and had an industrial lab, but it was clearly sort of a uh, not very clear how that would be uh, distinguished. Then we have a lot of applications in the drug discovery space. And uh, that is obviously quite a challenging area because, as you know, the the need uh, of funding just to bring drugs to the clinical phase is significant. And this proof of concept grant alone is obviously not at all significant enough or big enough, and it's not intended to cover all the costs related to drug discovery projects. So we need to, uh, if, if drug discovery projects are submitted and we welcome submission of drug discovery projects, you need to think about what is the step that this actually helps with in order to make the, the additional funding uh, possible. We don't restrict this to the uh, uh, innovations that have gone through to the, the DDD, the Drug Discovery and Development Platform. But I would say that those that have gone through the DDD platform or are in the pipeline of the DDD process have a significant advantage because they have had support from the DDD process uh, and, and therefore many of the other gaps in the drug discovery process may be covered. So therefore, if you are not in the DDD pipeline already, you need to explain how your discoveries can be supplemented with other funding and what is the particular role of the proof of concept grant here. So I'm just listing here, these previously awarded grants are available on the SciLife Lab website. So I'm not gonna describe them in any, any greater detail. And as you know, there were these 10 things that were awarded. And, and um, what I will do now as the, as the last step uh, for myself before passing this to Lillian is that just define also the roles of the two players. So Coave is defining who is eligible to this grant, and we will discuss the eligibility more. Coave provides the funding for this call. 
and we, uh, Coaware will then receive from this process a list of about 20 applications from this expert panel. And then Coaware will run this Walp, uh, Wallenberg launchback process uh, to provide coaching and further prioritization of these uh, uh, grant uh, applicants and then carry out the final selection and funding decisions for the proof of concept grants based on this uh, pitch session. Uh, and then the SciLife Lab uh, part is that we've been promoting the grant uh, opportunity uh, uh, in, in SciLife Lab media and, and uh, elsewhere. Uh, we are also discussing the appropriate profile of this call with Goawe and the, and the community. And our role is to assemble this evaluation panel and, and, and carry out this and I should say it's a confidential evaluation. Everybody has signed a confidentiality agreement. Uh, uh, evaluation of these applications and 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 then we are suggesting these 20 applications to the WALP process. So if you are familiar with other ways by which Coave and Scilife Lab collaborate in grant calls, it is often Coave funding Scilife Lab and Scilife Lab opening the calls and processing everything for uh, Coave. In this case, we want to make it clear that the, the that this is happening on the Coave side. It is also confidential, as you know, if you send email to to government email uh, addresses, this could be compromising sometimes uh, uh, IP, and therefore the processing happens uh, in a in a fully confidential manner. And uh, important point is that there's really no use of SciLife Lab government funding be it infrastructure or SFO uh, for this uh, purpose. And we are not on the SciLife Lab side making funding decisions. We only have helped to assemble the expert uh, panel just to clarify our role in that uh, process. And that was all that I have to say uh, now. Okay, uh, thank you, Oli, for this uh, excellent overview. Um, if you have any questions for Oli, uh, please save them for later, uh, or you can also write them in the in the Q and A chat already now. So uh, we will continue to hear more about the grant and the application process uh, from Lilian Wikström, and Lilian is the responsible for the program at the Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation. So go ahead, Lilian. The screen is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's just make sure I have the... Yeah, here we go. You can see my screen now. Excellent. So thank you very much, Olli, for introducing this proof of concept grant opportunity, which I think is an excellent chance for, for many of you uh, in the audience. So I'm glad that there are many people joining us today. Uh, I would like to first of all give you a short introduction to the Knut and Alice Wallerberg Foundation or Huawei and then I will describe this uh, grant opportunity in some more detail. Um, the Huawei was funded over a hundred years ago and has since developed into one of the largest funders of research in Europe and provides very significant support to Swedish uh, basic research. The focus is, as you probably know, mainly on medicine, technology, and natural sciences. Uh, most of the support from the foundation is carried out through uh, long-term grants and ex to excellent individuals and to research projects, but also to strategic projects and, and new programs that are important for um, society. A few words about the statutes uh, of the foundation, uh, which is really the basic, uh, the basic theme and common de denominator for all the efforts, is that they should be uh, landsgangneliga, translated into English as for the betterment of Sweden. And that's sort of the common theme of, of all the different efforts. Uh, Landsgangnelit is interpreted as activities supporting basic science, uh, thus giving long-term support without strings attached to excellent uh, science and uh, scientists. 
and also securing uh, top competence for Sweden. All of this is of real strategic importance to Sweden. And over the last few years, uh, another area of strategic importance has been highlighted, and that is innovation. So it's included as a focus area uh, to encourage and facilitate researchers to actually uh, capture the full value of the research and translate into product services or processes that benefit society. Um, the mechanism uh, to support this was already mentioned by Olli. It's called the Wallenberg Launchpad or WALP, uh, which is there to support innovation development broadly. As you can see uh, to the left uh, for all tech areas, like advanced materials, software, autonomous systems, quantum technology, AI, but also a lot on life science. Um, but uh, proof of concept projects in life science uh, need to be, uh, or we need to highlight this possibility also for the life science sector. And because of this, uh, the proof of concept call was initiated last year, and this is intended to be a yearly call. Um, so again, the, the VAL proof of concept uh, grants are research grants, uh, thus academic grants, and not to be confused with commercial uh, funding of a startup or something. There is a tool also in the VAL sphere called Navigar Ventures, that's uh, a, a real investment company, but there are no sort of, no strings attached or no, no uh, sort of, uh, exclusivity or anything like that. Uh, they are separate uh, programs. Um, so now onto the call. Uh, this is the second call for applications. It was launched on Monday this week. And the purpose is really <clears throat> to bridge the gap between basic research and utilization or commercialization and is intended to support activities that prepare for innovation and commercialization, not the commercial activities themselves. Um, so who can then apply? Well, it's quite a broad um, group that can apply. There are a number of uh, examples here uh, specifying that, well, first of all, you need to be employed at the Swedish university and uh, have a connection to the Valleby Foundation through having grants or having had grants, for instance, the Valleby Academy Fellows, Scholars, and so on and so forth. Um, also, uh, you're eligible to apply if you're part of some of these strategic initiatives, such as, um, well, there are many uh, non-life science uh, initiatives listed here, but uh, includes the data-driven life science, DDLS, the SciLife Lab, including fellows, um, and uh, let's see, uh, that's, that's the list uh, here. It's, it's it's all listed on the web page, so you can we can go back there and also discuss it during the the presentation. But um, this is really uh, targeting the personnel that works with with the life science as well as the scientists. Again, it's an academic grant, no strings attached. And it's a two-year grant maximum, and you can apply for up to four million. The timeline is as follows. Um, as I said, the grant opened uh, this week and will close at one o'clock on March 22. And then after uh, March 22, the scientific review panel that uh, Olli mentioned will start its work, um, scrutinizing and, and ranking the project proposals. Um, and suggest 20 opportunities to uh, the Coavia. And the VALP coaching will uh, assume on August uh, after the summer and proceed throughout the fall with the pitches in November and decisions in December. And the projects uh, will be ready to start early next year. So the process uh, broadly is that, well, right now we are trying to spread the word about this opportunity 
and uh, please help us do that and also mention to your colleagues uh, that th this this granting opportunity is available the application period uh, will be then yes uh, until end of march when the panel starts its work and hands over sort of the the silaf part over to uh, coave and the valp phase 1 uh, starts with a coaching of the 20 opportunities that have been listed or have been selected uh, and the ones that have been sort of identified to be most fit for this grant will then be uh, selected for pitching to the VALP executive committee uh, who will actually make the decisions for which ones will be funded and probably approximately seven to 10, depending on the quality of the applications. And then starts the real project, the, the phase two, uh, which is about executing the project plan. And importantly, to, to uh, build the team that's needed uh, to, to develop the potential product and to establish contacts with the, with the team that you need to interact with. The guys on the other side of this value of death that that uh, Oli showed. So a few words about the application and evaluation, uh, which are of course uh, uh, tightly corresponding. Uh, the application is, is done through the Wallenberg homepage and the portal there, and uh, you are expected to uh, submit a project description and plan. For those of you who uh, are familiar with the last year's call, there has been made, uh, or we have made some changes uh, to make it fit the purpose of the call better. And we really stress the importance of clearly stating the need, the benefit, uh, how this is better than the competition. And uh, in addition to, to the sort of a research background. So this has been detailed on the homepage. So I really encourage you to look closely there. Uh, another new feature is the one pager that we have uh, uh, we are requesting this year. Uh, please pay extra attention to this. Uh, this is something that has been uh, really uh, asked by the committee and the, both the evaluation board and, and the executive committee. So I think this will be an important uh, way of summarizing your project. So please uh, put uh, put some extra attention to this. Um, and then are the regular uh, attachments, the complete university budget CV, uh, also a certificate of the head of the department, I will come back to that, and, and verification of interest from external parties. Um, this is something that's unique also for this uh, call, is that we really want to make sure that you have already made connections with external parties who would be interested in partnering or using your um, solution in the next step. Um, so the evaluation criteria will then be very tightly linked to what we're asking for in the um, application. Is it, well, is your proof of concept project uh, and the milestones and deliverables well-defined and are they relevant for, for this particular uh, call. Does it really your innovation solve uh, an important problem? Uh, and have you been able to to define well what you're really going for, the solution, your your uh, product? Uh, also importantly, is it novel and unique, uh, which is important if you want to move on and and uh, develop this into a uh, a product. Uh, does it really have a place on the market? Uh, is it possible to protect it uh, through some type of intellectual property protection? And is, is there a plan for that? What is your awareness? Uh, and again, is there an interest from external parties to uh, help you bring this to the next step? Uh, what about your team? Do you have a team that's able now to, to carry out the proof of concept? project and uh, how about the time planned budget 
are they realistic to really complete uh, the project as you have submitted it? So those will be the evaluation um, criteria. So as you can see, this is not a, a, your regular research proposal, but it's it's very much targeted towards the proof of, of concept and the, the components that go into that. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, you can apply for a maximum of 4 million Swedish uh, kronor, uh, and it can be used for a time period of up to two years. Um, importantly, the grant can be only used for costs at the university. So this means you cannot buy services or, or uh, something on the on the side, so to speak, but the costs have to be okayed uh, by the university and follow all those uh, regulations and COAVE regulations as well, uh, which are uh, listed here. Uh, the money can be used for salaries of project members, infrastructure, software licenses, travel costs, rent of office and lab space, and uh, and the COAVE money can uh, be used to up to 20% to cover university indirect costs. And this is also why you need uh, to check this and have a certificate from your head of department that uh, this is okay. So as you leave the seminar uh, and go for lunch or whatever, uh, please take the time now to think about if you in your research have the ingredients for a proof of concept study. And what would the goal be uh, for that? Can you uh, translate this into well-defined and well-creating work packages and milestones? Uh, also, if you haven't done so already, uh, please think about external parties and how to engage them. Um, you need to document somehow an interest from external parties for your particular project. This doesn't need to be very formal. It can be an email um, or, or a letter or something like that. It's, it's not very uh, formal, as I said, but just uh, think about who you will need and who you need to contact to really uh, verify that your solution is, is um, interesting also from, from a point of view of, of uh, potential partners or customers or investors. Uh, some of these issues you may not feel 100% uh, comfortable uh, and you need a sounding board to discuss. And we have already contacted uh, all innovation offices, so they're very well aware of this call. And uh, I warmly recommend you to contact them for advice on this, business advice, support with uh, IP, market, uh, or regulatory strategies. Uh, these are all so aspects that the COAV cannot uh, help you with. Um, so I hope I have been able to give you an idea of, uh, of the, the purpose of the call and uh, what goes into the application and evaluation. Uh, there is actually a lot of valuable information on the homepage. So you can probably find uh, most uh, questions answered there in, in quite good detail. Uh, but we will now, uh, I think, have the opportunity to also discuss here uh, with uh, you. And I will stop sharing my screen so I can, can see you all. Thank you, uh, Lilian, um, for this, for clarifying the process. Um, and as you said, now we will have time for uh, questions and um, you can either post them in the Q&A chat here on Zoom or you can just raise your hand uh, using the raise your hand tool here on Zoom and I will uh, give you the word. So I think we'll start with um, one of the posted ones here. Uh, so this, I think is best answered by you, Lilian. Um, in terms of TRL, could you help specify what would be the best match? Is it from TRL 3 to 4, technology validated in the lab, and move it into TRL 7, demonstration in operational environment? It's it's somewhere there in the in the 3-4 area, I would say. But uh, since life science, it's, it's very broad, and we have everything from 
from you know therapeutics to diagnostics to uh, sort of technology building building uh, tools. Uh, so it's it's a bit difficult to sort of specify exactly, but it's uh, I would say around three four. If I can add to this, so maybe the more important thing is this step that Lilian was just, what's the next step? So it should be something that helps the next step and the next step and the next 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 thing may be different in different areas. We mm. have digital innovations, we may have drug innovations. So what is needed to take the next step may be different in different areas, but this should help the next step. And the next step should already then be fairly close to something that can be called uh, innovation process and not just the next step in research. Mm. Yes, yeah, sometimes we call it investment ready, but it, investments are not all uh, always sort of the end point. But it's it's really to have uh, have uh, have the basics for the next step, as as Oli says, whether it's investments or partnering. Thank you. So, do we have any more questions? Um, not really. Uh, so, there have been a lot of questions coming in about the eligibility uh, uh, of who can apply. So, we would actually uh, refer to the Scilab Lab website about the call. Um, and there, everything was will be specified. And if there's still additional questions, we have a question form where you can post your question and we will answer it as soon as possible. So we have one more question here. Um, from last year, most granted proof, proof of concepts seem to be focused on biology, but not on instrumentation development. Do you know why? Because of the application ratio? Well, uh... I don't think that there's a, sing a single and simple reason for that, but I mean, the, the instrumentation maybe sounds, a, sounds an area that is a, sometimes a little bit challenging in the in the academia. So you, we have a lot of methods, but then actually the instrumentation per se is often developed by big companies. So obviously, if you have an option to do that, uh, I don't think there's anything in this process against that. But uh, I don't think that there were too many fully instrumentation associated um, sort of a suggestions provided last time. But methods for sure, technologies for sure. Uh, and if there is an instrumentation, so be it. That's no problem. So I don't think we ne neglect it or, or, or sort of a um, uh, somehow we're against that uh, component. But you have to ap apply the same criteria that what can you do? in your instrumentation development with such a grant. You can't do miracles with one or four million. There needs to be a lot of other things that go to defining or developing an instrumentation. Lillian, anything else that you would add? No, I, I think, I mean, there were actually one of the granted or maybe even two of the granted projects from uh, last year were about the instrumentation. So I think clearly uh, those applications are very welcome. Yes, good. I just want to remind you to raise your hand if you have any questions. Uh, I have one more uh, here. Uh, so the question is, if the IP is owned by the researcher, but ongoing a transfer to a company, is that too late? Uh, well, I, I I can start. I think if, if this is a, a, the researcher's own company, so that it will still stay under, under the control of the researcher, uh, and there hasn't been sort of a, a commercial development in a company based on that IP, then it's it's fine. Because of the professor's privilege uh, in Sweden, it's it's not uncommon that uh, IP is transferred to a company as a sort of vehicle for holding it. So uh, then in that case, it's not, it's not an, a problem. However, if it has been transferred to another company or or if if commercial development has al already started based on it, then it's a different story. So I guess most important is that you just describe uh, what is the IP, who owns it, and how is how is uh, your freedom to to uh, make use of it uh, as well, and not only how mm -hmm. how the commercial exploitation is mm -hmm. happening. Thank you. So 
questions are coming in. Here's another one. Uh, <clears throat> for a drug development project, could you please provide an example of activities to plan? Completing a preclinical dossier PKPD and toxicity is a good goal, for instance. Well, uh, I, I would maybe say this in a manner that that um, in the DDD space, what, what we see uh, clearly is that academic grants typically end at a certain point. And that is where the DDD process, the drug discovery and development process has helped to take it uh, a few steps uh, forward and providing uh, uh, sort of a capabilities in this space. But often this is a collaboration between the DDD infrastructure and then the scientist. So when it comes to doing like preclinical work in animal models, this is something that, that DDD will not support you. You will have to have funding for it. And if that preclinical model is the way by which you create a proof of concept, that would create uh, validation for licensing that uh, drug uh, forward or, or making a, a co-development agreement with an external party, then that is the example of the type of uh, things that is needed. So it can be on the side of efficacy, it can be uh, additional, uh, additional PKPD or, or toxicity or whatever uh, proof that you gain through these additional experiments that removes a bottleneck or removes a concern uh, so that the the this this could be propagated forward so again there's no single thing but but again like drug target drug discovery uh, is out uh, so it has to be uh, further down the line the pipeline so Lillian anything that you would like to add no I I think I I, I agree Okay. And sort of a, by all means, at any point, please consult the drug discovery and development platform because they can provide you advice on, on where things are. And maybe their suggestion is that don't apply to the proof of concept grant, apply to DDD platform for uh, developmental, um, for, for drug discovery and development support. And by doing so, you already gain a, a knowledge of the process and the critical steps that will be uh, needed. So, so uh, that would be super helpful uh, for for also for your proof of concept uh, grant and its profile. Okay. Um, did we have a question from Mats, maybe or? Yes. Um, if. This is the right match. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not spare some Karolinska. I just wonder, uh, and I guess it's mainly for Lillian, when you said that the uh, grant uh, will be funneled through the university, I, I understand that as it will be funneled, but it can be used, let's say, for a separate analysis at the CRO and so forth, if it's paid for from the university, right? Or if that's yes. part of the project, sort of. Yes, so so basically the type of costs that the university uh, will uh, be able to, to to use money for, uh, that's sort of the one of the threshold. And then the, the other one uh, was, was, as I listed, what the COAV uh, suggests to use the money for. Um, so it's it's not uh, uh, in, in practice. Uh, the, if if there have been no sort of procurement of those CROs from the university, that would be a tough one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you like to add something, Oli? Yeah, a lot of animal studies like PK and so forth that has been mentioned are often done in, in uh, separate small companies as, as a service. And that's the type of data that, mm -hmm. that often is sort of made sooner or later in a DDD project, for instance. So. Yeah, it's 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 sort of a uh, by no means per se limited. These are just the practicalities. Of yeah, course, okay. you can do PKPD any way that you find most yeah. appropriate, and most people would not be able to create a pharma compatible uh, sort of a data out of their own lab. I mean, yeah. better to do it outside. Exactly. But, but it's just that this grant is an academic grant, so therefore it has to go route route uh, be routed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. To the university. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't see that we have any more.
questions. Um, Olin, Lilian, would you like to add something? Otherwise, I will, sorry. Hmm. If, if anything, uh, I would say there is really a lot of great information on the uh, Scilaf Lab homepage regarding this. So, uh, and also a possibility to ask questions. So, so please, uh, please have a look. And uh, I think also I would like to add, because I've been working with innovation in the life science space for many years, and I think this is truly a unique opportunity uh, to develop your project into something that can be commercialized or, or partnered. So please take a, take a good look at your research projects and, and uh, we hope to see it as an application uh, before May, uh, March 22nd. Yeah, maybe just to re-emphasize the fact that this is a little bit of a different duck than a regular grant application, both in terms of the process and in terms of the goals of it. So just pay attention to those um, uh, instructions in that sense. Somebody was also earlier asking on the on the net for the link to the previously granted project. So I I guess that is somewhere in the Scilife Lab web pages, but maybe we can promote that specific news uh, uh, URL as well to, to participants so you can look at them. But you should not sort of a, try to copy them. I mean, they were just based on whatever applications came in. So obviously they are just broadly reflecting the different possibilities. And like we very much welcome applications outside the medical space. And and like said, female applications would, would be particularly welcome as well, that this was a bit, little bit uh, biased uh, uh, application uh, profile last time. So co I mean, has always supported women very much. So, mm -hmm. so you, you, you should really consider applying. And, and also, I think this year we have specified uh, more in the application what we would like to see, but don't let that deter you. Uh, I think it's 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 going to be uh, sort of looking at the whole picture, but this, these guidelines are really there to encourage you to think clearly about your your the competition and, and the, the assets that you can protect and potential partners and the team and so on. But if you don't feel you're top notch on everyone, don't let that deter you from applying. Maybe one more thing uh, that 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 relates to the to the um, sort of a eligibility that we had many questions uh, last year uh, regarding this that who is eligible if you have used the Scilife Lab platform would you become eligible for this one no not a regular service that you've used for your research but if you have used this for DDD or any other activity that is really the key part of this innovation that you pr uh, promote forward, that should be uh, perfectly uh, fine. But again, read the read the website for for that uh, information. Yes, yeah, so many good points. And as Lilian and Oli already said, all the information about the grants is on the Scilife Lab website so we'll find it there and if there are any additional questions that you won't find an answer to on the website there is a question form uh, where we want you to ask all your questions so when you fill in the question form we will answer the questions as soon as possible and all questions will also be published on the Q&A um, and by that I want to thank you all for your participation here today uh, and for all the good interesting questions and uh, good luck with your applications.